So in this page of the of the Canvas modules, we will talk about a diagram um, called the big picture, and this kind of kind of shows the steps in a visual way of a statistical study. What do we do? Who who or what is involved? Um, this might be a good thing to write down in your notes as you're re as you're watching these videos and reading through these Canvas page modules. Um, might be a good idea to draw kind of draw your own little picture in your notes, and that way you can refer back to it. Um, labeling all the parts of the picture and everything. So, as it says here, we organize this course around the big picture of statistics. This is kind of, there's a lot of details in statistics, a lot of terminology, but this, this kind of gives you the overall idea, the big picture, and then we'll get into more detail later. As we learn new material, we will always look at how these new ideas relate to the big picture. In this way, the big picture is a diagram that will help us organize and understand the material we will learn throughout the, this course. So the big picture, kind of as we said, this, it summarizes the steps in a statistical investigation. So we, the first thing we do is we begin this statistical investigation with a research question, which is something you'd want to know about a population. Um, it's frequently something that, yeah, we want to know about a population. The population can be people or things, such as animals or objects. Um, for example, we might want to know how to answer the que a question such as, first, what percentage of US adults support the death penalty? That's something interesting. Um, but something like that, you know, it wouldn't really be feasible to ask every single person in the U.S., every single adult in the U.S. what their their um, their opinion is, right? So we'd probably just take a small sample of people um, and then ask them and hope that that is a good indicator of the overall feelings in the U.S. about death penalty. Or the next, another type of statistical study you might want to ask a question about could be, do cell phones affect bees? Which sounds kind of crazy, but it could it could work. So in that case, the population is not nothing to do with people. It's bees or cell phones, um, things like that. Do and then another one could be: Do cars get better gas mileage with a new gasoline additive? So that's that's a good <clears throat> that would be an interesting thing. People would, would want to know whether that is the case or not. Um, so the population that's that's probably a good thing to write down because we there will be quizzes in these modules <clears throat> and they'll ask things like yeah here here's an example what part of this example is the population so it's a good idea to write down the definitions of terminology in this class so here it says the population is the entire group that we want to know something about <clears throat> so if we were talking about that first example maybe what percentage of US adults support the death penalty that in that case the population would be the adults in the US, every adult in the US. <clears throat> but of course, like I said, we would take a small sample from that and ask, maybe ask a bunch of them, those people, um, what their opinion is. So in this in this diagram here, the blue, I don't know, that turquoise-ish color circle, <laughs> whatever color that is, um, that's the entire population. So imagine in that example, that, that's this circle contains all the adults in the US. Um, <clears throat> But as, as we kind of mentioned, often the population is so large that we cannot collect information from every individual in the population. So we select a sample from the population. So as, as you kind of see in this diagram down here, there's this yellow circle or orange circle um, within the, the turquoise circle. We select a small sample. Well, I guess it's, it's we'll, we'll get into more detail about it later in this course, but you don't want the sample size to be too small because say, what if I just asked two people in the US? Two people. That's not enough because those people, I don't know, they might not represent every U.S. citizen. So you probably want to kind of ask as many people as you can just to get a good overall idea. Um, but maybe not, of course you can't ask everyone in the U.S. because, you know, if you send a survey, not everyone is going to answer that survey. Or, yeah, there's all kinds of problems with trying to collect data from every single person in the U.S., I guess. So you kind of want to select a sample that's, you know, it's kind of like Goldilocks. She doesn't like her porridge too hot or too cold, you know, we, we don't want our sample to be too big or too small. There's probably a kind of a good, good size that's representative of the overall population, but not too large to where it makes it problematic to actually take the sample. Anyway, um, no, no, this, this involves careful planning, but also involves chance. So for example, if our goal is to determine the percentage of US adults who favor the death penalty, we do not want our sample to contain only Democrats or only Republicans. Because obviously, then the answer, our answer would be skewed. It either, yeah, it would be way too many on one side or the other. So you want to get a good sample that has all different kinds of people, different, yeah, parties, and all, yeah, a good sample. So you probably don't want to take people from only one area of the country, like say New York, because everybody there 
thinks similarly for the most part and then everybody you know in a different different places so you want to get a good good overall sample um so we can give everyone in this up uh, in the same opportunity to be in the sample but we'll let chance select the sample um <clears throat> and sometimes we use computers to randomly generate a sample size and we'll ask those people because if we if we try to make a random sample as humans usually random we don't we can't really do random but i guess computers can can give you a random sample at this step of the investigation we also carefully define what kind of information we plan to gather then we collect the data um and data or data i don't know i guess it depends on where you're from <laughs> some people say data some people say data i don't think one's wrong or right um data is often a long list of information to make sense of the data, we explore it and summarize it using graphs and different numerical measures, such as percentages or averages. We'll get more into that in future modules, but <clears throat> I guess if you just have a bunch of data or data, that's just giving you a bunch of values from different, different people in the sample or different items or animals in the sample. If you just see a list of numbers, it's hard to kind of come up with um, conclusions by it, you know, so that's why we use... We use different graphs and measures and things just to make it as soon as you see the data you can kind of come to some conclusion just based on the visual especially graphs um, so we call that step exploratory data analysis so you can see that that's part of the um the the visual here uh then remember our goal is to answer a question about a population based on a sample of course samples will vary due to chance and we will need to answer our question in spite of this variability so we need to understand how sample results will vary and how sample results relate to the population as a whole when chance is involved. <clears throat> this is where probability comes in. So you might have seen some probability in previous math classes. If not, it's fine because we will we'll kind of go through it very basic in this class. We'll go through it as if you've never seen it. Um, but <clears throat> basically, the probability is the machinery behind the last step in the process called inference. So it's kind of using the information that we've gathered about that little sample, the yellow circle or orange circle above, as you see, and trying to make a, I guess, yeah, trying to make an inference or a, or a statement about the overall population. That's what inference is. We infer something about a population based on a sample. So hopefully that sample is kind of random enough to, to really um, get the idea of what's going on with the whole population. This inference is the conclusion we reach from our sample data that answers our original question about the population. Hopefully, yeah, if, if your sample was random enough and good size sample. Uh, <clears throat> so at the bottom of this page, we have an example. Um, let's see. At the end of April 2005, ABC News and the Washington Post conducted a poll to determine the percentage of U.S. adults who support the death penalty. So a research question might be, okay, what percentage of U.S. adults support the death penalty? So the steps that we could do in a statistical investigation of this type would be, first, we want to produce data. We determine what to measure and then collect the data. So what they've done um, in 2005, the poll selected 1,082 U.S. adults at random. So probably some computer program selected them. Um, each adult answered this question. Do you favor or oppose the death penalty for a person convicted of murder? <coughs> Sorry to get so deep on you this early in the morning. Huh? Um, <laughs> this isn't just... Yeah. Anyway, um, number two, then you want to explore the data, analyze and summarize the data. So in this sample, they just took, you know, the number of people that said yes, for example, yes, I do support the death penalty for murder. And then they divided it by the number of people who, um, who, who they polled. So that's how you get a percentage, right? You take the, the number that you're interested in, which is in this case, the number that said, yes, I support the death penalty, divide it by <clears throat> excuse me, the overall number, which was 1,082. And somehow they got this, yeah, they did that division and they got 65%. So more than half, right? Because 50% would be half. Um, then, then they draw a conclusion. Use the data, probability, and statistical inference to draw a conclusion about the population. So our goal here is to determine the percentage of the U.S. adult population that supports the death penalty. We know that different samples will give different results because... Even though that sample was random, 1,082 people, it's not that much, you know, it's not that many compared to the overall U.S. population, you know, which is in millions. Um, <clears throat> so, let's see, then what are the chances that our sample reflects the opinions of the population within 3%? So, later in this course, as we get really deep into the, 
the all the terminology and everything that that's one thing we can calculate is if we take this sample and we ask them a question like in this one and we we said that 65 percent of them support the death penalty how do we know or how can we tell whether that actually shows us what the overall u.s population believes you know can we can we be sure that even though that was a small sample is that opinion within three percent of the overall u.s opinion so for example, is it for sure that 65% of the U.S. population does support the death penalty? And, and I guess when they say within 3%, they mean it could be as high as 65% plus 3%, which is 68%, or as low as 65% minus 3%, which is 62%. So how, how can we be sure that somewhere between 62% and 68% of the population does favor the death penalty? That's what they mean by this 3%. You know, 3% higher or lower than what I think it is. So how can I make sure that it's really in that area? Probability describes the likelihood that our sample is this accurate. So we can say with, there's a lot of percentages here, but we'll, it'll get easier as we go. We'll know all the terminology. Um, so we can say with 95% confidence that between, like we said, 62% and 68% of the population favor the death penalty. So we'll, we'll, we'll figure out as we go through this course how to calculate that. How do you know for sure that with 95% certainty that, that that is the the area of percentages that pe that support death penalty. So summarizing, a statistical investigation begins with the research question, then the investigation proceeds with the following steps. First, once you know what you want to ask, you produce data. So if maybe a computer program will give you a random sample of people or objects or animals or whatever you're studying, um, and then you ask them a question, or you observe something about them if it's an object or an animal. Obviously, you can't ask an object or animal a question. And then we explore the data, analyze and summarize the data, um, then draw a conclusion. Use data, probability, statistics, all those percentages that we saw above. We'll kind of see in the future how to do that.